Hello, let us discuss some neonatal and congenital gastrointestinal lesions associated with atresias and stenosis. The list includes esophageal atresia with tracheoesophageal anomalies or fistulas. Then we discuss pyloric stenosis and we continue with intestinal atresias including duodenal and then jejunoileal atresias. What is the mechanism of isolated esophageal atresia? Failure of esophageal recanalization at embryonic week 8. This includes posterior deviation of tracheoesophageal septum. What is the manifestation of esophageal atresia in pregnancy? Polyhydramnios. What are the symptoms after birth? Drooling, inability to feed, secondary to choking or coughing, and failure to pass a catheter to the esophagus. What are the possible complications of tracheoesophageal fistula? Aspiration pneumonia with respiratory distress, or just respiratory distress itself. What is the well-known associated malformation that tracheoesophageal fistula is a part of? The vectoral anomaly, including vertebral, anal, cardiac, tracheal, esophageal, and renal and limb anomalies. What is the most common type of esophageal atresia? The one associated with distal fistula. True or false, patients with tracheoesophageal fistulas usually don't have cyanosis. That's false. They have respiratory distress and cyanosis, and the mechanism of cyanosis is laryngospasm. This is actually a protective mechanism to avoid reflux-related aspiration. What physical exam maneuver could be the first step in diagnosis of tracheoesophageal fistula or esophageal atresia? Failure to verify presence of NG tube tip within the stomach. While previously a whoosh of air and auscultation was used to verify now the aspiration suction of a little bit of gastric content even with a pH meter is used to verify. True or false, the H-type tracheoesophageal fistula is the most common type of tracheoesophageal fistula. That is false. The esophageal atresia with distal fistula is the most common type. After the above-mentioned maneuver, how do we diagnose the tracheoesophageal fistula or esophageal atresia? Chest x-ray shows NG tube is cold in esophagus and that indicates esophageal atresia. In order to differentiate between the types of esophageal atresia slash fistula, we can use abdominal x-rays. Remember the normal gas pattern is some gas within the stomach. In the fistula form of esophageal atresia, the stomach gas is increased. And in pure esophageal atresia without fistula, we have no gas within the stomach. What is the confirmatory test for tracheoesophageal fistula? It is bronchoscopy. What is the treatment? Surgical correction. Before we proceed, one important differential diagnosis is differential of cyanosis in an infant with feeding and failure of passage of NG tube. The differential includes tracheoesophageal fistulas and anomalies, including esophageal atresia, but also quanal atresia. How do we differentiate? Remember, in quanal atresia, cyanosis with feeding is possible, but we do not have drooling, contrary to esophageal fistula. Another way to differentiate them is the fact that presence of posterior nasal passage obstruction in quanal atresia prevents NG tube to even pass beyond the NARS. Just a skill keeper, how do we differentiate laryngomalacia from coenal atresia? The hallmark of laryngomalacia is inspiratory strider that gets worse on supine position. Okay, let's discuss the intestinal atresias. What is the mechanism of duodenal atresia? Complete or partial failure of duodenum, duodenal lumen to recanalize during gestational weeks 8 to 10. What is the in utero manifestation of duodenal atresia similar to TF or esophageal? Facial atresia, we have polyhydramnios. Another similarity is timing of the symptoms. Both duodenal atresia and esophageal atresia manifest on first day of life, usually within the first feeding. What is the symptom difference? While esophageal atresia is associated with choking, drooling, and respiratory distress, duodenal atresia is associated with bilious emesis within hours after the first feeding. What's the important association? While esophageal fistula atresia are associated with vectoral, intestinal atresias are associated with Down syndrome in the case of duodenal atresia and associated with gastroschisis. Are there other associations with duodenal atresia? Yes, in addition to Down syndrome, we could have possibility of cardiac
cardiac and GI anomalies, such as annular pancreas, malrotations, and imperforated anus. What is the well-known X-ray finding of duodenal atresia? The famous double bubble sign. Air bubbles not only in the stomach, but also in duodenum proximal to the site of the atresia. Okay, while we mentioned failure to recanalize is the mechanism of duodenal atresia, what's the mechanism of jejunal or ileal atresias? Here, the mechanism is disruption of mesenteric vessels. In other, bo- in other words, some vascular accidents in utero prevents canalization. What environmental risk factors could cause jejunal atresia? Prenatal exposure to cocaine or other vasoconstrictive substances given the vascular nature of the etiology. What could be the manifestation of jejunal and ileal atresia and its difference with duodenal atresia regarding the clinical picture? While duodenal atresia manifests with biliary vomiting, jejunal or ileal atresia being more distal and therefore associated with distension, not emesis. While double bubble sign is the hallmark of duodenal atresia, what could be the x-ray findings is jejunal or ileal atresia. We could have triple bubble signs and we could have apple peel sign. What is it? Presence of ischemic necrosis shows segmental resorption of the small intestine in the pattern of a bowel discontinuity that resembles apple peel. It is sometimes also referred to as the Christmas tree with its spiral configuration. What is the management for duodenal atresia or jejunoileal atresia? Similar to tracheoesophageal fistula or esophageal atresia, it is surgical correction. True or false? Patients with duodenal atresia could also have choking and cyanosis. That is false. They do not have choking or cyanosis contrary to tracheoesophageal fistula. So remember, the feeding difficulty in first day of life could be manifested with choking and respiratory distress in the case of tracheoesophageal fistula or could manifest in terms of biliary emesis in the setting of duodenal atresia. And then cyanosis without drooling is seen with quanal atresia. Okay, let's now talk about pyloric stenosis, the hypertrophy of inner circular layer at the pyloric sphincter that results in gastric outlet obstruction in infants. Define the epidemiology of pyloric stenosis. It's common and happens in one out of every 600 births. The male to female ratio is 3 to 1 and it happens more commonly in firstborn infants. What conditions are associated with pyloric stenosis? Maternal exposure to macrolides like erythromycin, formula feeding, and presence of tracheoesophageal fistula. What is the symptoms and timing of clinical presentation in pyloric stenosis? Non-bilious emesis that typically begins around second to six weeks of age and progresses to projectile emesis after feeding. True or false, pyloric stenosis is always a congenital disorder. That's false. It could be acquired secondary to gastritis, peptic ulcer disease of pylorus region, or neoplasia. What are the possible complications? Infants are generally hungry, and these episodes of vomiting could result in dehydration and malnutrition. What's the notorious finding in physical exam? Palpable, olive-shaped, mobile, non-tender epigastric mass plus visible gastric peristaltic waves. Remember, among the esophageal and intestinal atresias and pyloric stenosis, the pyloric stenosis could be just an isolated pathology. Okay, what is the best initial test for diagnosis? Abdominal ultrasound. Elongated pylorus with pyloric wall thickness larger than 10 millimeter is diagnostic. What are the supplemental tests? Barium studies or upper GI series. What is seen in barium studies? Narrowed pyloric end and distended fundus plus the famous string sign, a passage of thin barium streak through the pyloric canal. What is the important lab finding specifically regarding the ABG changes? Hypocholoremic hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. What is the mechanism of this ABG change? The vomiting results in less of chloride, while volume contraction results in contraction alkalosis through activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This also means hypokalemia. How do you approach the management of patients with pyloric stenosis? Initially, you should keep the patient's NPO and establish IV access, then correct dehydration and acid base or electrolyte abnormalities. And for definitive treatment, we have surgical correction with 
pyloritomy or pyloromyotomy. And a final bonus skill keeper for this lecture in what conditions we could have the radiologic sign of double bubble. Any condition with duodenal obstruction include the differential diagnosis of double bubble sign and they include duodenal atresia but also annular pancreas, malrotation and volvulus and finally LADS bands. What are the LADS bands? Cross-passing duodenal folds that attach duodenum to the abdomen. Thank you. This finishes our discussion of tracheoesophageal fistula, intestinal atresias and pyloric stenosis.